It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holes barred between AFC South rivals. It's the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it comes your way next. Now the humidity is still a factor on this fall afternoon, but no rain in the forecast. That's the good news as you look inside Everbank Stadium here in Jacksonville. Today it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. But Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. Meanwhile, for the Texans, things are changing rapidly in the Space City. They've got the new coach and D'Amico Ryans coming over from the Niners. They made two big splashes on draft night, but fixing the defense seems a priority. And remember the 2022 draft? They took a lot of guys on that side of the ball. So maybe we just need a little bit more seasoning with some of the talent that they've accumulated. So here's Kaimi Fairbairn to do the honors. And off we go from Jacksonville. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence is so many tapped to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. Lawrence looking to pass on the first play. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Here's Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll manage to pick up about four in second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now. ETN once more. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. It's great seeing that type of run from ETN. And look, I know we couldn't consider him for rookie of the year last year, but it really was his rookie season since an injury cost him all 2021. And he looked like a rookie of the year. Ninth in the NFL with over 1,100 yards for a surging Jaguars offense. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. 
Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. On second down, a run with ETN. Got a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. 10 yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll send Kirk in motion right. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Now Lawrence. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. The kick by McManus is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have it. A well, man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And he's got Rome. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a 1,000-yard campaign last year and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth-round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. So, Charles, you know, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Foye Aluakon. Now, how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike, big bike. What do they have? 
for this third and 11. Stroud on third down now. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he will get this to the midfield stripe, but that's not going to be enough. He's a few yards short. Time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Texans send the punter out. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. pass options we often talk about a good quarterback and running back well having a talented wide receiver helps also yeah even coming in third in the discussion sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield straight ahead etn and some space here and he'll be taken down but not before they work it across midfield 52 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you've said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. On first down, Lawrence. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They go play action now, Lawrence. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he'll get this to the 30 yard line before crossing over out of bounds. 19 yards there on the catch and run. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there is no space available and incompletion as a result. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. The catch and run good for 18 and a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and 10. ETN up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. 
He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellows, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by McManus is good, and that will make it six to nothing. So scores on their first two possessions, but 6-0, so field goal is probably not what they were hoping for. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Not what they were hoping for, but they should be happy that they have points on the board. It almost feels like that old slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? In this case, though, they want to be slow and steady now, but get explosive later and put the points up on the board. So a couple of field goals now, 6-0 our score as the kick's away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. The last series form a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. now on first and ten and this will be well too low for him to bring in it's incomplete uh, you got a young quarterback you know maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him a lot of times they fall back on what they know best their arm he's he's slinging it on this one had a wide open target but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy Second down, and this one incomplete as well. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. And that is incomplete. Tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. The Texans send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And a fair catch call for and made just inside the 35 yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 82 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 39-yard line. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tank Bigsby. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside.
Running out of the gun with ETN. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Lawrence will throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Zay Jones, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. McManus's point after is good. And the lead now stands at 13. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Throwing now is Stroud. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Second and ten. Here's Stroud. Throw is going to be incomplete. That was not a real confident throw right there, and he's just two of seven to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And Stroud now to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. A 40-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. That's a nice throw there. And he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive. And here he comes out throwing again. 
and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. Thirteen nothing is the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Lawrence. Open man, this is Brenton Strange, the tight end. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Man open here is Jones. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Johnson will get it into the end zone for Jaguar touchdown. Just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point from McManus is good. And that pushes the lead up to an even 20. To the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. And now out comes Houston. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. No gain on the play there. Second down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. On second down, here's Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now Stroud. He'll let this go deep for Collins. And got his man complete. And he's going to step out of bounds all the way down on the other side of midfield. A huge play there for Houston. And even 40 yards. Ah, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. First and 10, it's Pierce. He'll get this down to the 38. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. 
second and six. And Pierce gets it again on second down. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They'll try to run for this with Singletary. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. And that is no good. And that will keep the deficit at 20. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. Now a second and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. In today's football, when receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. The Jaguars on third down, just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Looking to throw Lawrence. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds and it'll be spotted. It's spotted at the 14-yard line. The Texans offense set to regain possession. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three. Didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to the stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? This is second and eight. On second down, it's Stroud. His throw incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well. So give some credit to the defense. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. 
Here's Stroud. Gets the dump off to Pierce. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here's Lawrence. Pass incomplete. Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in a game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Lawrence. And he will find Ridley, that's complete. And mark him down, way up close to the 40 at the 39. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Here's Lawrence to throw. Again to Calvin Ridley, and he's got it once more. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and two. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. Throw right side is gonna be caught by Kirk. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Lawrence's throw here, taken in by Ingram. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Now Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. That'll go as a pickup of eight. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. 
And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. Lawrence will throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And just shouting him off there. Running room at the 50. Look out. He might score. He will score. Touchdown, Texans. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And that makes it 23 to 7. And no doubt one of the most, if not the most exciting play we'll see in this game. The kick return all the way to the end zone for six points. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half. That's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. And they'll try and set up the screen to ETN. about the 35. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15. 
14 and a first down. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Second and 10 now, it's Lawrence. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was gonna get it. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Lawrence. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Lawrence going to throw again. Open man is Kirk, complete. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's a second and eight. On play action, Lawrence crossing route and he hits his man. It's Jones. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. with five seconds left. Not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. The kick by McManus is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. In the first half, we saw a strong outing from Trevor Lawrence. He's got a touchdown through the air as his guys have raced out to a gigantic early lead. All right, Coach, thank you very much. As we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive? on that play sheet for any one of those coordinators. They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Ball at the 26, second and seven. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Singletary with a good gain. And after four seasons and 3,100 yards in Buffalo, he signed with Houston this offseason. Welcome reinforcements for a ground game that was second to last in the NFL a season ago. Stroud sets up the play action. That's complete. It's Collins. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Hand off right side to Pierce. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 67 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's second and 10. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been a running game for the most part that's powered him down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And they had the big halftime lead. Their defense just helped them out further by forcing the turnover. So things are starting to look pretty rosy. They certainly are, but they've got to be careful about getting complacent, though. They still need to go out and run their offense efficiently. Now this is ETN on the draw. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out 
and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. Now a second and two. Now Lawrence to throw. That's going to be caught by Kirk. They juked him. Touchdown! Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. So they're able to capitalize there on the short field, and that might prove to be the score that turns out the lights. The party's over. Oh, sorry about that. That's an old reference there, folks. But, yeah, they've been the better of the two teams by far. And that's great complimentary football right there. Defense gets the turnover, sets up the short field, and the offense goes right out and scores to open up a pretty sizable lead. McManus's point after is good, and that will bump the lead up to 26. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Houston's offense taken over again. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Pierce has it knocked loose, and the Jags grab it, and they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. He has been a workhorse for them in this game, and ball security hasn't been an issue until that point. Yeah, and let's face it, when he's going to carry the ball that many times, he becomes more and more of a target for the defense, knowing that he's going to be the primary guy. They'll just send more and more players towards him, trying to make sure they knock the ball free. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Here's a give to ETN, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's Lawrence. And he's going to go down here a sack. They push him back to the 34. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is caught. 
Touchdown, Jaguars! Christian Kirk with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Jaguars take the force fumble and convert it into six points. A familiar refrain, a turnover leads to a touchdown, and that lead grows even wider now here in this third quarter. Yeah, partner, I'd say there are a lot of grins breaking out on that sideline because, let's face it, they came in thinking they were in for a real fight in this game, but this one's been about as one-sided as we've seen in a while. In addition, if you're a backup, time to start stretching and loosening up. You may get some playing time in this one. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable. Now, a win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. Here's a second and two now from the 33. On second down, it's Stroud. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 102 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. Another carry for Pierce. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From just shy of midfield, here's second down and seven. Play action. Stroud down. He's got it to Collins complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 33. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Stroud now on first and 10. Gets the dump off to Pierce. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Now Stroud. And this is incomplete. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. Yes, they have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Now they got to get to the 23 here on third. Here goes Stroud again. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Show Fadakasi with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. 
Uh, partner, you know what I'm going to say before I even say it. Yeah, you just cannot take a sack in that spot. You're exactly right. You can't take a sack in that spot. Potentially now, a three-point swing right there. And this one is no good. He missed it. And they will remain well, well behind. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. That tackle behind the line made by Will Anderson. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. A gain of eight there on the play, and it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. On third down, here's Etienne. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. The throw right side here gonna be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. And he gets it down to the 32. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Lawrence now off the bootleg. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Jags first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. On first down, Lawrence. And that would not to be, it's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Lawrence. Quick slant caught by Kirk. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A handoff for ETN. And he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. 
Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A gutsy call. Turns out to be a good one, though. First down on a pickup of 11. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, this one him may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going, got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jaguars add six more to their point total, and they're on cruise control right now here in the fourth. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point from McManus is good. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Houston set to take over. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. Man open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. A huge play there for Houston, and even 50 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Stroud looking to throw. And there he's caught. Touchdown, Texans. Dalton Schultz. 
from six yards away. And the Texans get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Obviously, the scoreboard right now is not the friend of this rookie quarterback, but hey, a touchdown pass there maybe builds a little confidence. Every rep is valuable when you're a rookie. Every time you step up and throw the football, there's a lesson to be learned. Yeah, he took advantage of a little bit of loose coverage there with the lead, but at the same time, got it done. It'll take a little bit of satisfaction away from that throw. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard, but... They've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives, and I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now, people continue to accelerate, but we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way that this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Motion man left is Kirk. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, up big here in the fourth quarter, up really big. That passing incompletion, I, I don't think they needed the completion, but Charles, this is an offense right now that they're just having fun. They're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, you're right. They didn't need a completion. They certainly don't need any more points, but they're not going to turn them down. They're going to continue to run what they have in their playbook, and they still want to run it efficiently. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And here comes the Texans now. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. First and 10, it's Stroud. Caught left side by Mechie. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. And Stroud now to throw. To Pierce, they set up the screen. 
And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. Well, I mean, look, obviously there's no 20 or 30-point play in that playbook, but they can try to end things here on a positive note despite trailing big, and that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now, and all they can control here is how their final plays develop. The throw down the field caught by his running back. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A well-executed 22-yard gain. A shotgun snap to Stroud. That's into the hands of Woods. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods from 10 yards out. And the Texans are able to cut into that deficit. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that trims the lead a bit, but still standing at 26 points. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Well, we've reached... Well, we've reached the stage where it's a it's a mere formality at this point. They've got the comfortable lead. We know what the outcome is going to be. I guess the only question is, do they want to put more points on the board before the final gun? Well, I certainly hope not. And I'm being selfish here because you and I have flights to catch. Let's go ahead and finish this one off, guys. <laughs> You've taken care of business. Let's close it out. And you and I, let's get to the airport. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel. But it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays. And they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. As many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day 
that one team has more trouble with the heat than another, and especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball. You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those <laughs> were gone in the first quarter. They were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop him. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. 12 more yards there and another first down. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. A gain of three, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.